Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Zoz, and today another very detailed forecast update coming your way. We're going to be solely tracking thunderstorms across New South Wales and Victoria throughout the course of today. A lot to get through, a lot of detail in this forecast update, and we're going to break it down for you state by state, region by region, and hour by hour. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The support lately has been much appreciated, and we're trying to hit 20,000 by the end of the year, but let's get stuck straight into things over in New South Wales. Now, overnight, there have been a nice round of severe thunderstorms, specifically across South Australia, which did touch the uh, western extremities of New South Wales at around 9 or 10 p.m. last night, and I believe Broken Hill did receive some good rainfall, some very good lightning activity as well, and you can see this as we play this uh, radar imagery and radar loop back. You can see they really did have some good lightning strikes at around 10 or 11 p.m. last night. Uh, so if you do live in or around Broken Hill, please do let me know what it was like. Same thing with Hawker as well. I cited two comments on yesterday's forecast update about giant hailstones outside of Hawker. Temperatures are across South Australia fueled this severe thunderstorm outbreak last night with maxima up to 44 degrees Celsius. Very warm for this time of the year. And today we're going to have something similar. So let's get stuck straight into the forecast. I'm going to start things off with New South Wales, but we will get to Victoria in just a few minutes. So stick with me. So across New South Wales, there's still a few showers and a couple of thunderstorms around here and there, especially up towards Burke. There's a few thunderstorms and showers currently on the uh, forecast. And also on the radar imagery you can see here, a few showers and storms persistent up there, but nothing too crazy. And the showers are continuing as well in the eastern half of the state, specifically the southeast around Canberra and then down towards the southeastern coast. There's still a few showers down there, but again, that is basically all said and done right now. There's not too much in the way of weather going through there. Now, we've got to watch the forecast very closely because over the next two or three hours, probably about two hours from this, when this video goes live, we're going to see a line of severe thunderstorms start to fire up, stretching between Albury up towards Hilston, Griffith, and then through... Uh, central parts of New South Wales and right up towards Tibbaburra in the northern uh, northwestern corner rather of the state and these thunderstorms are going to mean business specifically around the Cobar area and then down towards the parks and the young area we're going to be seeing some pretty good severe thunderstorms fire up throughout the course of tonight around parks specifically yesterday we were saying between parks and Cobar but I reckon the best environment for potentially severe thunderstorms is going to be in this general area as well now I would also like to add compared to yesterday's forecast this is isn't as intense as what I was expecting, considering just how much the forecast models were uptrending on this round of severe thunderstorms, specifically in the early afternoon around 4 or 5 p.m. around the Cobar Parks and Forbes area. I was expecting a, a kind of a nightmarish situation to unfold, but this actually looks a lot more tame compared to what I was expecting and also what was on the forecast yesterday. So that is some good news, but that is not to say that the environment is unfavorable for severe thunderstorms. It is indeed the opposite. It is looking very favorable and specifically specifically in this general area here that I'm circling with the cursor, some nasty storms are expected. There's just not as many as what was expected yesterday, which I guess is very good news indeed for central parts of New South Wales, because these storms were going to mean business. Now, the risks uh, early on in the afternoon, specifically between 2 and 6 p.m. local time, we're expecting large hailstones, damaging winds, isolated pockets of heavy rainfall, a lot of lightning as well. And under the right thunder cells and in flood-prone locations, we will be seeing some minor to moderate flash flooding as well. So make sure you do stay safe on those roads. And if you are commuting around the Cobar, Dubbo, Parks, Young, uh, Forbes sort of area tonight, between about 2 and 7 p.m., I'd recommend trying to reschedule your commute or work around it or something like that. Make sure you are watching the radar imagery as well and stick to those main roads because it is going to be a nasty commute in some of these storms and under the right cells here. Just make sure you're driving well below that speed limit. It is going to be a nasty ride, that is for sure. Some big storms are expected uh, throughout the course of tonight. Now, these storms are going to continue to, uh, to develop into the evening. This is the forecast at 6 p.m. You can see some pretty nasty cell activities outside of parks and the Forbes sort of area, extending up towards Dubbo as well. It looks like this is going to split off into two separate thunderstorm systems. We're going to have a squall line most likely developing into the late evening hours around the sunset uh, and a little bit later time frame uh, around the Dubbo sort of area. This will likely develop from uh, a couple of Polson's uh, supercell thunderstorms into a big squall line and then move into the foothills of the Great Dividing Range. We'll also see this squall extend down towards Wagga Wagga, uh, Young, and then even in towards Canberra later on in the evening. And then we'll have a separate zone of severe thunderstorms up here in the northern half of New South Wales, north of Dubbo and up towards communities such as Walgett, Lightning Ridge and Burke, just a little bit further south of those communities just mentioned. And then later on in the night, these thunderstorms look to be the ones that take off again as night falls 
we will likely be seeing some pretty nasty severe thunderstorm action from these severe thunderstorms up here. And again, long track supercell thunderstorms are possible. And when we have long track supercell thunderstorms on the forecast, the risk of weak to moderately intense tornadoes does also uh, remain there. So certainly going to be an interesting night indeed. Make sure you are watching the radar as well. And watch the radar for the uh, dreaded hook echo. If you see a hook echo in your area, it means you've got a rotating thunderstorm and rotating thunderstorms or supercells can mean tornadoes. Even in Australia, tornadoes do happen every now and then. They're not as frequent as they are in the United States, of course, but we always get a couple each year, and we've definitely got an increased chance of seeing a few of them firing up tonight. So if you don't know what a hook echo is, there's no really good way for me to explain it. Uh, I'd recommend searching up what a hook echo looks like on radar imagery. It's a great thing to familiarize yourself with, but it has been flashed around in the news before, so I'd be surprised if people didn't know what it was. But if you are unfamiliar with it, make sure you check it out and look at it on the Wikipedia page or something, but don't scare yourself or anything. These thunderstorms, while they're going to be severe, they're not expected to be crazy dangerous or destructive. They will be dangerous if you are caught outside uh, with them or if you're unprepared. Uh, but for the most part, if you do keep yourself inside, it's just going to be a bit of a wild night of thunderstorm activity. More exciting than it will be scary. Uh, so yeah, again, don't panic about these severe thunderstorms. If you've got uh, a house that can withstand a thunderstorm, and that's pretty much every house around the nation, then yeah, you will be fine to say the least. Now, throughout the course of today uh, or later on into tonight, you can see these thunderstorms do weaken, but we're still going to have long track powerful thunderstorms up towards the Tamworth Armadale area. Uh, even as far out as Moree, we could be having long track strong thunderstorms later on into this evening and even in towards early tomorrow morning. It looks like the risk of thunderstorms completely peters out around the Tamworth and the Armadale area at around 3 or 4 a.m. local time tomorrow morning, uh, but there still will be a couple of thundercells persisting into early tomorrow morning. It is just going to be a pretty wild night, especially up into the northeast of New South Wales in this general area here. After that first round of severe thunderstorms slowly transitions into a squall line around the Parks and Orange area, we're going to see these thunderstorms take over the powerful thunderstorm scene, and we'll see these become really long-tracked, potentially lasting up towards eight hours, uh, which is highly unusual for Australia. We do still get this every now and then, at least once or twice a year, but it is still pretty unusual. This is a very American setup that we have right now. Uh, specifically around the Tornado Alley in America, this is a very uh, familiar setup to them. And it is a little bit rare and much more intense for an Australian thunderstorm setup. Again, I don't say this to panic, I'm just saying it because that's how it is. So don't stress about these thunderstorms here. It is going to be a wild night, but it's certainly not going to be anything crazy dangerous or anything like that. So again, make sure you aren't freaking yourself out, at, out about it. I'm just giving this information so that everyone knows what is coming through and what uh, they can expect for their location. Now, in terms of hazards, of course, with the school line, we've got the uh, heavy rainfall, damaging winds, and the small hailstone risk as well. Well, that's going to be specific for the southeastern corner of New South Wales. Canberra could receive a little bit of squall activity as well later on tonight, probably at around the 5 or 6 p.m. It looks like it's going to be a pretty low chance for Canberra, actually, all things considered. But around the orange Lithgow Bathurst sort of area, we could be getting a couple of squall lines move through, uh, through that area, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Again, heavy rainfall for the most part looks to be the threat. Same with damaging winds, so make sure you do uh, batten down some uh, outdoor furniture that's at risk of flying around or trampolines and the such. Uh, it could be a little bit uh, hairy for them. They could uh, <laughs> get into the air and cause some damage that way. Fallen tree branches as well. That's another hazard that I've gotten to mention so far. If you are, do live in an area or under a tree that's prone to dropping branches, then make sure you stay away from it. And if you can get up there today and chop the tree branches down safely, that'd be a good idea to do it. Uh, not only is it good for thunderstorm season, it can also help you in fire season as well, but that's a pretty niche um, uh, kind of position to find yourself in, I guess, at this time of the year. Uh, anyway, that is um, kind of the main risk from the squall lines from supercells with that large hailstone risk as well thrown on top of the heavy rainfall and damaging wind risk and we also have specifically up in this general area of New South Wales a risk of tornadoes later on this evening and into tonight we will be watching that very closely and if we do get multi-tornado uh, systems or uh, a lot of severe thunderstorms I'll also re uh, release an evening update on these systems as well we'll just see how they play it out considering the downtrend in the intensity of these thunderstorms that we saw from yesterday's forecast in comparison to, day to today's we might only see a couple of potentially severe thunderstorms fire up, but just let me tell you, the environment looks beautiful for severe thunderstorm activity. So if we don't get severe thunderstorm warnings, that would be very unusual considering the setup that we have right now. And then down towards Victoria as well, we've got to give Victoria a little bit of love as well. They've got some severe thunderstorms as well on the forecast, specifically later on tonight around the Albury area, we'll be seeing a couple of severe thunderstorms fire up. I think the risk down there is mostly going to be the damaging winds and moderate to heavy rainfall. There's really 
nothing in the way of hailstones. Definitely no tornadoes expected across this part of Victoria as well. We can also see some pretty good thunderstorms fire up across the Western Plains, uh, just outside of Geelong and Melbourne. So we will keep a very close eye on that today. Sometimes we get some nice severe thunderstorms fire up around the Ballarat or the Ararat area and then sweeping into Melbourne or Geelong. There is a chance of that today, but I don't think it's a great chance and I don't think it's anything worth uh, worrying about or fretting about right now. I don't think it is a high chance of happening. But in terms of Victoria, the threats mostly seem to be more rainfall as opposed to severe thunderstorm impacts. They have had a good couple of drops of rainfall, especially around the Mansfield and Shepparton area overnight. So there have been locations picking up up towards uh, 30 or 40 millimetres with another 20 millimetres on the way. The highest accumulations were outside of Rainbow. I I believe uh, outside of Hopetown, yeah, this little community there, uh, rainfall accumulations peaked out at 60 millimetres, but believe it or not, not the wettest spot, or spot in the nation as well. A thunderstorm over in Western Australia dumped 66 millimetres outside of Old Mornington Homestead overnight, so some very heavy rainfall out there. Uh, the heaviest falls, however, uh, for the most part, have been across Victoria and New South Wales. Widespread accumulations between 20 and 30 millimetres overnight. Very interesting to see, very interesting to wake up to. And in terms of rainfall that we do have, on the forecast you can see here uh, until over the next 24 hours there really isn't an awful lot on the forecast and that's because this is thunderstorms the forecast models have an absolute awful time trying to predict rainfall for severe thunderstorms they're just not high resolution enough but you can see a couple of good drops of rainfall are expected especially where those severe thunderstorms in the more northeastern sections of the state of New South Wales are expected to fire up but generally speaking rainfall is going to be a very unpredictable between 5 and 30 millimeters expected some places will pick up much more and a lot of places will pick up nothing. Uh, it is just a very difficult forecast to make. And I'd also like to add a little uh, section about Queensland as well. We do have the chance of potentially severe thunderstorms, specifically around the Chinchilla, uh, Miles and Taroom sort of area later on this afternoon, and specifically around 6 or 7 p.m. local time. We'll be seeing a couple of potentially severe thunderstorms fire up, but a lot of non-severe pulse thunderstorms are possible, potentially up towards 15 or 20 cells outside of Toowoomba. So we will keep a close eye on things over there. Conditions do look pretty favourable for some severe thunderstorms over in Queensland. Definitely not as favourable as there will be across New South Wales, but we will be keeping a close eye on things because southeast Queensland might get a taste of some severe thunderstorms as well. They won't make it into the uh, Brisbane or the Gold Coast sort of area. Just a couple of showers expected there later on tonight in the northern parts of the Brisbane area and into the Sunshine Coast from the remnants of those thunderstorms. But again, nothing crazy there, just a couple of millimetres of rainfall expected. Now, it's been a reasonably concise forecast for New South Wales, Victoria, and also Queensland. If I have left anything unanswered, then please do let me know in the comment section, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can with this forecast here. Just before we finish off this video, we will take a look at what's driving this uh, severe thunderstorm setup. We're going to get to other severe thunderstorms around the nation as well, happening next week in tomorrow's forecast update. There's just too much to be talking about across New South Wales and Victoria uh, to dive into detail around the remainder of Australia. But yeah, in terms of the forecast, for today, we're going to be seeing hot temperatures, high humidity values fire up across New South Wales, and as such, there's going to be plenty of fuel in the environment for severe thunderstorms to flourish. Not going to be as much fuel as we saw across South Australia yesterday, which means those thunderstorms will likely be slightly weaker than some of those intense cells that blew across South Australia yesterday. Boy, that was that a setup on radar, though. That looked fantastic later on yesterday afternoon. I was watching it uh, as it unfolded across South Australia. It looked absolutely crazy, and I reckon it will be bigger tonight in terms of how much more rainfall is expected, but I just don't see it being as intense as the South Australian setup that we had yesterday. But don't get me wrong, that was very intense for South Australia. Like I said, high humidity values, huge amounts of convective available potential energy. Not so much huge values for this time of the year, but still some pretty big values in general. Once you start getting above those that 2,000 joules per kilogram of available air for these thunderstorms, which, uh, I mean, it's an arbitrary number. It means basically nothing. But just take a look at these colors here that kind of explains it all. Blue and green means relatively weak values. Once you start getting into yellow, it's moderate and then orange and the darker oranges and reds and even blacks, so you get really high values. A lot of energy available for thunderstorms to flourish in this environment. And you can see specifically across the northern parts of the state later on this afternoon and into this evening, there's going to be a lot of energy for severe thunderstorms. Also into Queensland as well. And that was a very good idea talking about southeastern Queensland because that's certainly somewhere that's going to get overshadowed with the thunderstorms tonight. Around the Toowoomba area, there is going to be a lot of fuel for thunderstorms 
But yeah, it is going to be an interesting forecast indeed. A very interesting day for severe thunderstorms as well. A lot of energy available for them to flourish and it is going to be a wild one across New South Wales. I'm very happy with this forecast as well. I believe, especially for the uh, northeastern corner of the state, I've done a very good job combining the forecast model data and getting a really accurate forecast. So I believe that the weather models are going to be very reliable for there. Uh, in more central parts of New South Wales, around the parks and Griffith, Wagga Wagga and Albury sort of area, I think it's a bit of more of a difficult sell. I reckon the thunderstorms are going to be a little bit more sporadic across those locations. There will still be some strong cells there, but I don't reckon the squall lines are going to be as strong. I think it's just going to be another thunderstorm for some of those locations. But specifically for the northern half of New South Wales around the northeast, it is going to be a wild night indeed. Now, as I said earlier, don't panic about these systems. There's nothing you can do to stop a thunderstorm from impacting your location. Again, these aren't going to be dangerous or extremely destructive thunderstorms. They can still cause damage. They are going to be strong. They're going to have damaging winds and large hailstones across places, and the rainfall will likely cause some flash flooding across places as well. But stay inside and you will be completely fine. It's just going to be a rough night, but it will be completely fine by tomorrow morning. Uh, the chance of tornadoes is low. It is still there. If you do see, like I said, a hook echo on radar looking uh, coming for your location, I'd recommend getting into an interior bathroom. That's the best way to protect yourself from a tornado. But in terms of preparing for a tornado or, or evacuating, that is a very bad idea. Again, you just can't panic in that situation. Stay calm, get yourself into an interior bathroom. But that is a very, very niche scenario, and I don't think that's going to come into play tonight. Tornadoes very rarely hit um, populated areas around Australia, just considering the remote locations that they fire themselves up in. So I don't reckon tonight is going to be the night where we see a tornado track through a town or anything. Uh, and even the chance of tornadoes tonight, it isn't exactly high or anything, but we will keep a very close eye on things. There'll be an update later tonight as well as necessary. If these thunderstorms do go ham in the late afternoon, I'll be watching things very closely. And if there is another update necessary or we get new information, then I will be putting one out at around 2 or 3 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Anyway, so that is all that I have time for this morning. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. The support lately has been much appreciated. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and I could not run this show without them. So again, their support is much appreciated. We're on the way to hit 20,000 by the end of the year, which is a crazy number to uh, me. Thank you so much for everyone that's watching. It really is uh, amazing to see all the support in the video. So yeah, again, thank you so much. That is all from me today, and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.